Tourette's disease. Tourette's disease, everybody knows about Tourette's disease, which is, it's this disease where people curse uncontrollably. Scatology. Tourette's disease, that doesn't begin to scratch the surface of what Tourette's is about. With Tourette's, yes, you get that scatology. You also get inappropriate gesturing, tics, facial tics, gestures of all sorts, aggressive ones, sexually inappropriate ones, all sorts of vocalizations, barking sounds, animal sounds. It is just a torrent of behaviors coming out. Now the critical thing when looking at Tourette's is this is different from the inappropriate behavior of somebody with frontal damage. Frontal damage is closer to home. Every single day, I would bet all of us have thoughts that are boastful or lustful or petulant or whatever where we would die if anybody knew we were thinking that and damage the frontal cortex and when you think it, you say it. It is not the secret desire of every Tourette's patient to bark like a dog and make quacking sounds once every seven seconds. And finally, thanks to the damage of that disease, they are disinhibited to do so. This is an astonishingly clear example of a line between the essence of who that person is and these weird hiccups of the id that occur in the limbic system with Tourette's. And again, in its milder form, it's not a disease, it's individual variation. Now, remarkably with Tourette's, of course, people are beginning to learn something about the biology of it. There's a genetic component. It's probably not that strong. Beginning to see brain imaging correlates of it. One totally weird possible way to wind up with Tourette's. And this is a brand new class of pediatric diseases called PANDAS. PANDAS diseases, which stands for, do not write this down, which stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychological Disorders Associated with Streptococcus. Here's what happens. You have a three-year-old, four-year-old kid who gets a strep infection and runs a high fever and winds up being the one in 10,000 kids in this situation where something goes wrong, recovers from the fever, everything is fine, and then two weeks later explodes into tics and obsessive patterns and Tourette's-like disinhibitions and all of that. And where did this come from? Totally paralyzing and none of the normal drugs work and suddenly someone stumbles on what does work, you give the child a drug that suppresses their immune system. Things go back to normal. Then a couple of years later, they have some other fever and they spike a high fever and two weeks later, they explode back into these tics, these disinhibited behaviors, these obsessions, all of that. What's going on? What appears to be the case is in the subset of people with the high fever, these kids, the blood brain barrier opens up in a way that allows the immune system to get to places in the brain where the immune system isn't supposed to be and you form and antibodies that attack elements of your own brain, of your own central nervous system, and this is what turns out to be the case. It appears to be, in some cases, an autoimmune disorder, the treatment being give the person immune suppressants. And when you look at adults with Tourette's disease or adults with obsessive compulsive disorder, they have far higher than expected at chance levels appearance of antibodies in their bloodstream against constituents of their nervous system. And they have a higher than expected rate of these childhood fevers. The sort of stuff we've been getting throughout, groping at these strange little pieces of making sense of this stuff and have something like that. And you wind up with a disease that has this bizarre array of symptoms that you see in Tourette's. And some years ago, I actually had somebody in this class who had Tourette's, and it wasn't bad. He had like a few facial tic sorts of things. And after the first couple of classes, he came to office hours and was kind of describing that he had Tourette's, and he was very glad that I was sort of familiar with the disease, and explaining that this was sort of something that occasionally became disruptive in classes, and if it would be possible, it might make sense to have an exam. And he spent the entire time doing this. This was the disease, this was the essence of who he was. And you could not ask for a clearer line. Look at this. 500 years ago, you have Tourette's disease. It tends to have an adolescent onset of the symptoms. It's got somewhat of a biased female-to-male ratio. And suddenly, you've got a 
13-year-old girl who suddenly starts cursing uncontrollably with bizarre sexual references or whatever, and what's the only possible conclusion? You've got someone possessed by the devil who should be treated appropriately. Look at where we've gotten to in 500 years. We've gone from taking people like that and burning them at the stake to letting them take the AMCATs in a different room from everyone else so they don't disturb them with the barking. We've gotten real good with a disease like Tourette's of drawing the line over who the disease, the disease and who the person is. 